This next video is a comprehensive tutorial discussing the 11th use case in Bethany Lyons' top 15 LOD expressions. And this 11th use case is where we compare the average value across a range to a certain value anywhere in our chart. There are a number of things to consider in this video, and depending on what your data source looks like, your strategy and calculations could be different. And that's what I want to explore and expand on this video. There will be two parts to this video. The first one is discussing this specific example. We are going to be using the exact same data set that the white paper uses. The second part is discussing how calculations could be different if you are using a data source that has a different detail from what you're seeing in this example. And for that demonstration, we will be using the Superstore dataset. If you need a refresher on LODs, please check out the links in the description below to see several video tutorials that can help you get up to speed. In addition to a comprehensive LOD tutorial, I also have videos on the top 1 to 5 LOD use cases and the top 6 to 10 LOD use cases. This video is sponsored by DataCamp. It is an online learning platform with a mission to teach data to everyone. I have been a paying DataCamp subscriber over the years, and I am excited at how the platform keeps on improving and expanding their offerings. They have specific skills tracks. If you want to learn specific tools or technologies, they also have career tracks that are catered to what you need to know if you want to be a data analyst, a data scientist, a machine learning scientist, as well as a data engineer. I am also thankful for their Data Camp for Education program, which helps instructors like me deliver valuable and relevant education to our students. In one of the analytics courses I taught, I was able to assign a full module on data literacy to my students. This covered data science for business, data science for everyone, machine learning for everyone, data visualization for everyone, analyzing data in Tableau, as well as cloud computing for everyone. And my students finished the course ready to tackle data challenges. If you are interested in learning more about the data space, or if you're thinking about changing careers or roles and dabble into data, this is a very exciting time. And DataCamp is a platform that can help you jumpstart that career change. If you want to learn more about DataCamp, Use the link in the description below and check out the first chapter of any course for free. Let's go ahead and start by downloading the sample workbook that comes with this white paper. If we scroll down, we should be able to see a way for us to download this white paper. So right here. I've gone ahead and downloaded and opened this workbook. Let's quickly review what this dashboard shows. So in here, we can set our own start and end dates, and that's going to be shown on screen as a reference band. What we want to do is we want to be able to take the daily values within this range, get a number, and compare that number against any daily values that we're seeing for the rest of the chart. So for this particular example, this is from February 1st, 2014 to June 1st, 2014. The average daily value in here is $6.19. So for this particular example, we want to compare this value to the value in July 3, 2013, which is $10.23. So essentially, what we want to do is we want to take our $10.23, subtract that with 6.19, and figure out what the percent difference is. And to do that, we want to divide the result with 619, and that should yield us 65%. Note that all of these values pertain to a single stock ticker. Let's go to one of the worksheets. We can click on the view data icon in our sidebar. Let's open this up. And let's sort this by the ticker values. Let's take a look at the ticker fire. What we're seeing in here is for every date, for every day, there is only a single value. So for example, one value for December 31st, 2012, one value for January 2, one value for January 3. Now this is important to note because this will influence how our calculations will look like. If we compare this particular data source with the Superstore data set that comes with our installation of Tableau, and if you're working in a PC, it's going to be in your My Tableau repository, 
data sources, the version of Tableau that you're working, and the language that you've installed it in. So this is that sample Superstore data set. Let's open this up. It is important to note that for the Superstore data set, there is no guarantee that there's only a single value in each day. And the reason for that is this is a transactional data. Transactional data wherein you have an order ID that can have multiple row items or row IDs. And there could be many different orders in a single day. So we need to take this into account if we need to compare the average value over a certain range. And we are going to expand on that later on in this video. Going back to our original workbook, let's go ahead and download the original data source. Let's use that in a brand new workbook so we can recreate what is being demonstrated in this example. And in here, there should be an option for us to export the data to a CSV file. So let's go ahead and do that. So right click, export to CSV, migrated data, and let's call this ticker data. Let's use this new data source now in a new workbook. Let's drag over our new ticker data set, drag it over. Let's connect to sheet one and let us start by creating a simple line chart with reference lines from February 1st, 2014 to June 1st, 2014. And this is specific to a stock ticker. And this one is selecting VDSI. Create our line chart. Let's right click drag date onto column. So right click drag selecting continuous date at the very top, click on OK. This generates our date axes for us. And then let's display our adjusted close, drag that over to rows. This is our very simple line chart. Now let's just adjust the thickness of the line. I'm going to make this a little bit thinner. Now we also want to show this per stock ticker so we can add our ticker to our filters. Right click on ticker in your sidebar, show filter. I'm simply going to move this underneath the marks card to save a little bit of space. And we can also change this to a single value list. So on the top right corner, there is an arrow. We're going to select single value dropdown and let us select VDSI. Now let's add our reference band and we can start by adding our two date parameters. So in your sidebar on the dropdown, create parameter. The first one, let's call this start date. This is a date field. And the current value is 2014. And this is February 1st. So February 1st. Click OK. Now we can create a second parameter by duplicating the first parameter because they're very similar anyway. So right click, duplicate. And then for the second one, we're going to change the name and we're going to change the default value. So let's click on edit. Let's call this end date. And the value for this will be June. So June 1st, select June 1, click OK. Let's now display both of these parameters. So control click, control click, and then right click to show the parameter. So those are our two values right now. In our analytics tab in your sidebar, we can select a reference band. So drag over the reference band. And in here, we want to make sure we are targeting the date and not the whole table, not the adjusted close. So it's going to be the date. And as we make adjustments to the reference line, we should be able to see the visual update real time. For example, we want the band to be coming from the start date and we can see the shaded area get adjusted. Let's make sure this goes all the way to the end date as well. So on the drop down, end date, and we're simply not going to display any labels. So in here right now, it's set to computation. We're just going to leave this as blank. So on the drop down, none. For the label on the drop down, none. I'm just going to make some adjustments with the grid lines. We're going to remove the grid lines for now. So under format lines, we're going to select the grid lines to none. For this demo, let's also add one more reference line just so we can easily see what number we're comparing to the average number of the range we're comparing to. By default, we are going to set this reference line to July 3, 2013. So let's add our third date parameter. So on the drop down in your sidebar, create parameter. Let's call this selected date. Selected date. This is going to be a date value again, and this is going to be set for 2013, July 3. So 2013, we're going to change this to July and July 3. Click on OK. Now let's call this first worksheet our chart. Now before moving forward, what I'd like to do is to display all the details so that we know exactly what numbers we're trying to get. 
So let's create another worksheet. This time around, we're just going to call this details. And this is just for reference, just so we can validate the numbers that we're actually getting. So for the details, let's display the ticker. And we're going to simply leave VDSI. So right click, keep only. We're also going to display each individual date. So right click, drag date. And we are going to select discrete date because we simply want to display this as a column of values. And we're also going to display adjusted close. So let's drag that over to text. Now in here, note that each of these individual values, although it's coming in as the sum of sales, it's really just a single value because right underneath in our data source, there is only a single record per day per ticker. To confirm this, we can simply click on one of these values, go to view data, and in the full data tab, so let's click that, we should be able to see that there's only a single value. So even though we are showing some of adjusted close, it is really just one adjusted close. To help us with our validation, I'm going to create a calculated field that limits the data to the selected values in our parameters. So on the dropdown, I'm going to create a calculated field, simply going to call this within date. And again, this is just for checking purposes. And in here, we're simply going to check if the date is greater than or equal to our start date. And our date is also less than or equal to our end date. So drag that over, end date. By the way, in here, all of these white spaces, it's mostly for readability. It's not going to affect your expressions. So we can simply add some white spaces as well to make our expressions more readable. So let's click on OK. And let's add this new field into our filter. So in here, only the ones that are within the selected date range should appear. And the reason we want to do it this way is we want to add our totals. Again, this is only for checking purposes. Under the analytics tab, we can double click on totals. And in here, we can see the grand total at the very bottom. This is the grand sum. So let's move this up first. So right click on grand total, column totals to the top. And what we want to do is to display not the sum, but the average of all of these values. And we can do that here by clicking on our measure, selecting total using, and instead of total using automatic, we're going to say total using average. So drop down, total using average. And now what we're seeing in here is 6.186, which should be the same value we are seeing from the original example. So how do we convert this into an LOD expression? Right now, what we know is we want to base this expression on a ticker. So it's going to be fixed to a ticker. Now, what we also know is this has to be only within a specific range of values and that it's going to be the average of the daily values. So let's try to compose this LOD expression. So on the dropdown, create calculated field. Let's call this average across range. Let's say per ticker. This is going to be fixed to a ticker, so fixed ticker. And we also know that this needs to be within a range of values. So we basically have to say if date is greater than or equal to our start date and date is less than or equal to our end date. If this is true, then what we want to show is our adjusted close. So drag the adjusted close over and then end our if else statement. So let's close this with our closing curly brace. Now there's a couple adjustments we can make. The first error is because our level of detail expressions, it requires an aggregated value, but our adjusted close, that's not an aggregation. So we are going to need to enclose this or encapsulate this in an aggregate function. In our case, we know that this needs to be an average. So we can simply put average around this whole expression. So A, V, G, and then put the whole expression in here. Just make this a little bit bigger so we can see the full expression. So this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to get all of the individual values and we're trying to average that out. And we can see that the calculation is now valid. Now, the other adjustment we can do is this expression is already in another calculated field. So if you have this other calculated field, you can simply use that or utilize that in this LOD expression. So in our case, I'm simply going to remove this and use within date. So if it is within the valid date, then we're simply going to display the adjusted close and we're going to pass all of those values into an average value. So let's click on apply, click on okay. Let's just validate what number does this return? So dragging that over into our text table, we can see that the value is consistently 6.186. 
Let's go back to the first sheet. Now I also want to add our reference line for our selected date. And let's also display that parameter control. So right click on selected date, show parameter. This is our default value, July 3, 2013. Let's go to the analytics tab, drag a reference line over. And again, this is going to be attached to a date. And let's display the parameter value here. So parameter value, selected date, and we can just display perhaps our value here. So that's July 3, 2013, and let's click on OK. Now I'm going to add one more calculated field that gives me the value at this day. So in here, let's create a calculated field on the dropdown, create calculated field. Let's call this selected value on date. And let's simply say this is if the selected date is equivalent to the date, then we just simply want the adjusted close. So adjusted close and then end. So let's display this value on the label. We can see that this is 1023, which is the same value that we see from the original workbook. Now, just for reference, let's add our average across range onto our title as well, so we can easily see it. So under chart, double click our title. Let's just call this average across selected range. And let's display this value. So average across selected range, let's click on apply. It's 6.186. Now we have a lot of the pieces we need in place. What we need is this value for the selected range. We want the average value across the selected range. And in here, we're simply going to subtract these values divided by our 6.186. So we can generate a calculated field for that. So on the dropdown, create calculated field. Let's call this percent difference from selected range. Let's move things around. For the expression, it's going to be the selected value. This is already in our canvas, so we can simply drag it over. And that's going to be minus the average across the range. And in here, we want to take this and divide this all by the average across range. So let's put a bracket around the first expression, scroll to the right, and then divide this by the average across range. Okay, let's click on OK. Let's change the formatting, right click drag, default properties. This is going to be number format. Let's leave this as percentage, two decimal places, and let's display this as well in our label. So right now, the value that we're seeing is 65.38%. And again, just to compare with the original workbook, we are getting the correct result, which is 65%. We can definitely make adjustments to our formatting now, but the important thing is a lot of the pieces are in place. This is fairly dynamic. So if we change the date for whatever reason, so let's say January 1st, 2014, we can see that the selected range average actually adjusts as well. And our percent difference, if we select a different value altogether, it will just automatically update. One additional modification we can do is we can also add a parameter action. So instead of us trying to look for a date that might work, we can simply select our selected date by clicking on one of these points in our graph. To do that, we can go to Worksheet, Actions, and from here, we can add our parameter action. So under Action, we're going to select Change Parameter. We're going to set a name, and we are going to make sure that we are targeting the parameter for our selected date. And the source field will be the date field that we have in our canvas. So let's set this up, Change Selected Date. This is going to be on select. Target parameter is going to be our selected date. And in here, source field will be our date. Click on OK and another OK. Now what happens is when you click on any of these values, it automatically just changes. For the second part, let us target how we can apply this to the Superstore data set. The main overall steps are going to be the same. However, because the granularity of our Superstore dataset is a little bit different, it means that we have to create additional calculated fields so that we can simulate what's happening here. I'm also going to walk you through the strategies on how to check if your data is correct. Let us go ahead and connect to our Superstore dataset. And as a reminder, this is going to be in your My Tableau repository in the Data Sources folder, the version that you have, and the language that you've installed it in. Let's drag this over. For this example, we're simply going to use the Orders tab. So drag this and create a brand new sheet. For this data source, each individual day, so if we right-click, drag, order date, display the discrete date, 
we will see that for each individual day, there could be multiple order IDs. And for each order ID, there could be multiple rows. Let's display the corresponding sales. So let's drag sales over to where it says ABC. So if we want to use a daily sales chart and compare the average values on a daily basis, we're going to have to take this into account. For example, January 5, 2018 should have a value of 20. January 6, 2018 should have all of these values and it should not be duplicated. Let's add our totals so that we know what numbers we're expecting. In your sidebar, the analytics tab, let's double click on totals. We can also remove the totals at the order ID level. So we can simply click on this pill, uncheck subtotals. Again, let's focus in on a few records. Let's take a look at January 5, and again, that's 20. There's only a single record, a single row ID for January 5, and that should be an easy check. For January 6, there are a series of order IDs, a series of row IDs, and the total value is 4,407. Let's create our first level of detail expression, and we are going to fix this to the order ID. So we simply want one total per order date. On the dropdown, create calculated field. Let's call this daily sales. So daily sales. And in here, we're going to fix this. So this is going to be fixed to the order date. Let's put a colon and let's drag some of sales in. And let's close our curly brace and click OK. Let's just display the value. Let's confirm that we are getting the results that we want. So double click on daily sales. And in here, we can see that we're actually getting the actual sales that we're expecting. Now let's start building our chart. Before we build our chart, let's rename the sheet. Let's call this our details. And this is our check. Let's create a brand new worksheet. Let's call this one our chart. And in here, we simply want to display our line chart providing a daily sales value. So right click drag order date. And in here, we are going to choose a continuous day value. Instead of sales, we are going to use our daily sales, our new fixed LOD expression. And we're simply going to display that. Let's make the line a little bit thinner. Let's also start introducing our parameters. So on the drop down, create parameter. The first one is our start date. This is going to be a date. And just for checking, we are going to use the range January 5 to January 6, 2018. So 2018, this one is going to be January 5th, and let's click OK. Let's duplicate this parameter for our end date. So right click, duplicate, let's edit this parameter. We're going to call this our end date, and this one is going to be set to January 6. The reason we're doing this is so that we can easily check if we're getting the correct results. Click on OK. Let's go back to our details chart. What we want to calculate next is the average across a selected period of time. In our check, we simply want to take a look at January 5 and January 6. So let's keep only these records. The value that we want to get is the total for January 5, which is $20, and the total for January 6, which is 4,407. So if we bring up our calculator, $20 plus 4,407, divided by two, the number that we're expecting is 2,213. So now let's generate our calculated field that gets the average across a selected period of date. From here, we know we need to fix this to an order date. However, the added challenge is the level of detail of our data source is really still at the row ID level. So we need to make sure we prevent our calculated field from treating these as individual values and adding them all up and therefore generating the wrong average. Let's create a calculated field. Let's call this average across range. Average across range. Let's make this a little bit bigger. We want to fix this to an order date. And in here, we can say that if the order date is greater than or equal to our start date and the order date is less than or equal to our end date. Then we want to return our daily sales and end. Let's close this curly brace. And we know level of detail expressions need an aggregate. So we are going to encapsulate the expression right after the colon with an average. So what is this expression going to return? Right now, we are fixing this to an order date. For example, January 5, it is going to check 
is January 5 within our start date and our end date? And if that is true, it's going to return $20. For January 6, again, it's going to check whether it is within our selected date range. However, what's going to happen here is it's really going to force returning multiple 4,407, but we don't want to count this multiple times. So what we want to do is for this to return a single value, the average of all of the 4,407, which is going to be just a single value 4,407. Now we can see that this is still not our final number. We still need to add these two and then get the average value. Therefore, what we need to do is this whole expression still needs to be passed to another average aggregate function. We're also going to make our final value a fixed LOD. So it's going to be just a table scoped LOD. So curly brace is going to be fixed and then simply a colon. And we're going to use average across our nested LOD our inner fixed level of detail expression. And then let's close the curly brace. So again, what we're trying to do in here is for every date, we are going to get the total sales. So for January 6, it's going to be 4,407. We want to make sure that we're only returning a single value. Therefore, we need that average. And after we ensure we only have a single value per day, we are going to pass those daily values into an average function. Let's click OK and let's validate if our result is correct. Average across range, we drag this over and this is the number we're expecting, 2,213. Now the rest of the steps are going to be very similar to the earlier demo. So let's go back to our chart. Let's show our parameters. Let's add our average across range because I want to display that in our title. So let's change our title for now. Let's have our title reflect a lot of our values. So this is going to be selected date. Let's insert our start date to end date. Average in selected range. Let's insert average across range. Let's click on OK. Let us add our third date parameter. So in here, create parameter. Let's call this selected date. This is going to be a date value. Click on OK. Let's display this parameter, but let's go ahead and add our parameter action right away. So under worksheet, actions, add action, change parameter. Let's call this change selected date. And this is going to target our parameter called selected date. And this is going to be based on the day of the order date and click on OK. So as we select any points, our selected date should change. Let's add that to our title as well. So double click in here, selected date to compare. Let's add that parameter value. Let's add another calculated field for the total sales for that particular day. Let's create calculated field sales on selected date. If the order date is equal to our selected date, then we are simply going to display our daily sales. And let's end and click OK. Let's display this value onto our label, 129,000. Let's display this in our title as well. This is going to be our selected sales. Insert sales on selected date. Click OK. Final calculated field on the drop down, create calculated field. Let's call this percent difference. And this is going to be the sum on the selected date minus our average. And again, this is going to be our numerator. Let's enclose this in our parentheses and divided by our average across our selected date. Click on OK, percent difference. Let's change the default property number format. This is going to be percentage. Let's also display this on our label. Let's format our title a little bit, make the fonts a little bit smaller. Let's put a little bit more formatting here. So anything that is dynamic, we're going to change the color so that we know they're the ones that we expect to be updated. Let's also add our reference band. So in the analytics tab, reference band onto the day. And in here, it's going to be from the start date, no label to the end date, no label. So let's try this out. We can leave the start date, but we can expand our end date. So for example, we're looking all the way to August, let's say August 31st. Let's also change our selected date. So for example, right now we're looking at a smaller value. And as we click, we should be able to see all the values get updated. This has been a long tutorial. 
but I think there were really a lot of pieces and considerations that we needed to understand so that we can effectively use this particular example in our own projects. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate your time and your support, and I'll see you again next time.